And it's MSNBC's Chris Matthews. He compares Soleimani to Princess Diana. Elvis, Iranians, he's dead wrong and pushing propaganda. Oh, my goodness gracious. What, what do you think about this? The way Matthews was characterizing it, there were big crowds in the street <clears throat> when Soleimani's death was announced. It turns out that the army ordered <laughs> the people into the street. Yep. And since then, just as an aside, I thought your audience would be interested, there have been mass, mass, mass demonstrations in Tehran against the government, against Soleimani, and calling for the resignation of the dictator Khamenei, who is the supreme leader for life. Nobody elected him, he just is until he dies or someone kills him, they're asking for his resignation. So Chris Matthews, in his divine stupidity, says that the death of Suleiman is like the death of Elvis or the death of Princess Diana. Can you imagine <laughs> what goes through his head as if the most popular singer of all time, the most popular royal of all time, their dying is somehow similar to the killing of a mass murderer. That is the insanity coming out of at least Chris Matthews' mouth. Insane, insane. But, In but he's not the only one. <laughs> Everybody is at team. all. Um, if we move on from MSNBC to CNN. The last, you know, Zakaria GPS. Uh, talk a little bit about Soleimani, the sig significance of this, and also just what we have been seeing in Iraq over the last, you know, 24, 48 hours. What is going on? Sure. So I think I, the, the, everything was said exactly right. Uh, Soleimani is, it's difficult to convey how revered he is in Iran. Imagine the French Foreign Legion mm -hmm. at the height of the French Empire. This guy is regarded in Iran as a completely heroic figure, personally very brave. I was wondering, I, earlier when I was trying to, when Ara was talking, I was trying to think of somebody, and I was thinking of de Gaulle, although he became a leader of the country, which Right, not. it's not quite, but yeah, right. but it, there's something, he means bigger than any, any he, put it this way, other than the supreme leader, Khamenei, and maybe the president, he, is, he looms larger in Iran than almost any other figure. Mm. He's regarded as personally incredibly brave. The troops love him, uh, and he has been the... The, the kind of mastermind of Iran's policies in Syria, in Iraq. So when General Petraeus was fighting uh, the Iraq war, mm -hmm. the surge, I remember him telling me that Soleimani was his principal antagonist. That was the guy the American generals were bumping up against. Stan McChrystal at one point had to decide whether or not to attack a convoy that, can, that, that had him in it. And it was a big decision because, you know, potentially eliminating Soleimani would have huge blowback. Mm. Man, oh man. So Barry, this guy calls Suleimani a heroic figure. I mean, I, my mind is twisting right now. I don't know what to say. What What do you think about this idiot? Well, let's, let's give this idiot a history lesson. Charles de Gaulle was the leader of the French resistance during World War II when the Nazis were slaughtering the French. So he fought the Nazi occupation of France and then later went on to become president of France from 1959 to 1969. He's highly revered as one of the great French heroes of all of French history. Now how is it that a mass murderer of nationwide, oh, I should say international proportion, could somehow be compared to the greatest French hero of modern times. It takes someone of either infinite ignorance <laughs> or, or someone that for some reason thinks jihad by Islam around the world is a good thing and you and I and the rest of people that are fans of CNN ought to be saddened by his death. The comment was literally that stupid. This comes from the conservativefireline.com. Shout out to them. And it says Michael Moore destroyed after poorly written tweet apologizing to Iran in Farsi 
for death of Soleimani. So we have a liberal here who is virtue signaling. Barry, virtue signaling so much so that he decides to try to use farce in a tweet. And he did a terrible job. What do you think about this guy? Well, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't read Farsi, but <laughs> people, uh, particularly our national director, Annie Cyrus, who is from Tehran and speaks Farsi. And basically, the Farsi tweet he sent out was very poorly worded. It was more or less an apology to the Supreme Leader on behalf of America saying, sorry, we killed one of your guys. Oh my God, as if you apologize when you kill a mass murderer. Maybe if he only killed a few people, it would have been okay. But since he was known around the world as the leader of the largest uh, worldwide terror group, for some reason, Michael Moore thinks he needs to apologize to the leader of Iran because he didn't vote for Donald Trump. Therefore, he doesn't support the killing of General Soleimani. Again, really stupid. But he's not done. He has also sent out um, tweets begging Iran to let him and fellow leftists take Trump out. Yep. I mean, he talked about effing hope Trump will not be president for life, we might have to do something to take him out. It sure sounds like a threat against the life of the president to me, Jermaine. So this guy is absolutely out of his mind, Barry. And this does not even stop here with the Holly Weird folks. There was another woman by the name of Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan goes and makes a tweet, says, Dear Iran, the USA has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime. We do, we do not know how to escape. Please do not kill us. Hashtag Soleimani. I mean, this is uh, it's almost bizarro world. What do you think about this last one here? I will say the same thing I normally say when people ask me, what do I think about Hollywood directors and actors telling regular Americans like you and me how to vote and what to think? Mm -hmm. The average person in Hollywood never went to college. Most never finished high school. Yep. They are virtually uneducated. Uh, many of them, I'm not saying all, but they're fabulously wealthy, uh, overly indulged men and women who literally don't have a regular relationship with planet Earth and its citizens. They get what they want when they want it, and they believe, because they have an opinion, something popped into their head, that 100,000 or a million people ought to immediately hear about it and follow their lead. It's, it's literally arrogance on steroids as if they were elected to give us their opinions. I can tell you from my perspective and the perspective of many people that we talk to, the best thing that could happen for Trump and the Republican Party in 2020 is more Rose McGowan, more Michael Moore, and similar very left-wing, progressive, anti-American stars saying they're moving to Canada <laughs> or they're go. moving to Nigeria mm -hmm. or moving to Mexico because America is such a horrible, repressive, fascist, murdering regime stocked by and led by white supremacists who want to kill everybody else. <laughs> The more they talk, the more Trump's numbers go up. Mm -hmm. There was a, 
rapper by the name of Cardi B. She she used to be a stripper. Uh, she's an awful lady, Barry. Let me tell you. She said that she wants to, you know, um, apply for citizenship in Nigeria. Yeah, that's the one I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, Barry. This woman is ridiculous. These people cry all day long about racism and how bad America is, while they well, make millions of dollars. They're on their private jets. They're flying all over the world. I mean, and somehow it's better for them in Nigeria. Okay, and Whoopi Goldberg was going to go to Canada mm -hmm. in 2016, remember? And um, take about 50 celebrities that swore they were leaving the yep. country because they couldn't survive in what a horrible place America would become. Meanwhile, record employment numbers, record economic growth, lowest African-American unemployment in history, lowest female unemployment in history, lowest Hispanic unemployment in history. The economy's on fire, everybody's doing better, taxes have been significantly lowered, and the leader of terror around the world is dead. Let's do a GoFundMe for this gal to go to Nigeria. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. Let's see how the stripper business is in Nigeria.